Hi everyone, Vega here, and in today's video we're going to be returning to our Brightest Star series and looking at Vigil again, this time versus the Sun in a battle for planet Earth, so let's get to it. Now before we start, don't forget to check out the original Vigil video where we compared it to Betelgeuse in a battle of the giants. Vigil is around 900 light years from us, and has a solar mass of around 21 solar masses with a radius of around 80 solar radii. So let's carry on and let's start the comparison. In our first graphic what we're going to do is we're going to actually remove the sun from our solar system and we're going to pair it with Rigel at 100 light years distance. Now let's see how that plays out. Here we can see 100 light years distance, the sun on its way out. 100 light years is some 6 million astronomical units, it's just an astonishing distance. Rigel is currently the 7th brightest star in our skies if we don't include the sun but now it gets brighter and brighter as it moves towards us and the sun moves away. Richard is actually a multiple system of four stars, but for the purposes of this video, we're only going to be talking about Richard A, which is the one that most people think of as the star itself. Richard now at 100 light years is minus 5.58, by far and away the brightest star in our skies, much brighter than even the planet Venus, and the sun, as we can see, has disappeared completely from view. At an apparent magnitude of 7.17, it's no longer visible to the naked eye. So Rigel, now the night brightest star in our sky. Okay, so what we should do then is change the parameters. And what we're going to do now is we're going to move ourselves out to the Jupiter's beautiful moon of Callisto. And we're going to move the two stars to the one triple star system with Sirius at some nine light years. This is because Sirius is currently the brightest star in our sky. Let's see how that plays out. So at some 570,000 astronomical units, we can see Sirius' magnitude is minus 1.46 and is the brightest star in our sky as the sun fades away. Rigel now getting bigger and bigger as we can see. The sun this time doesn't disappear, its apparent magnitude is 1.84, leaves it a bright star in our sky but not even in the top 10 list. Whereas Rigel now look at it, it's becoming brighter and brighter, a variable star itself so it could even become brighter than this with its apparent magnitude of minus 10.94 is as bright as a quarter moon. What a magnificent star it is. And the pure power is just unbelievable. So what we're gonna have to do is change the parameters again. This time, let's go back to Earth. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna move Rigel and the sun just to one light year's distance now. Let's see how that plays out. Don't forget that one light year's is still at a huge distance of 63,000 astronomical units. Here we see depicted the Grand Canyon in Nevada on a, on a day with no sun. In fact, there is a sun, and there it is, but it's minus 2.82. It's a very, very bright star in the sky, but still d wouldn't be outshining Venus. Well, it would because there's no sun to reflect it. But as you can see, Rigel is just a completely different category of star. At one light is distance and a minus 15.58 magnitude. It's now as bright almost as the full moon. It might make you wonder what the habitable zone of Rigel, would that make the Grand Canyon rehabitable now we've lost the sun? The answer is no, because although Rigel is such a powerful star that its habitable zone reaches at 650 astronomical units, one light year is just an astonishing distance that even the star of Rigel's category cannot warm up for us. So we can see that Rigel far outshines the sun at one light year's distance. So what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to change the parameters. We're going to put the sun back in the centre of our solar system and Rigel, primarily burning helium at the current point of its life cycle, at 367 astronomical units from us. The reason being is this is where the apparent magnitude will be roughly the same as the sun. Let's see how that plays out over the beautiful city of Liverpool. Rigel, of course, is actually probably the most powerful star within a thousand light years of us. And some might think of it as the mother of our local area in the galaxy, or at least I like to think of it that way. Here we see the beautiful sun rising over the city of Liverpool and the liver buildings and the port. At some 0.006 light years from us, or 367 astronomical units, here we see Rigel rising, the same brightness as our own sun at minus 26.74 magnitudes. Imagine having twin stars like this. Rigel being the reason you can see a disc there is because Rigel, uh, the disc of Rigel would be actually a lot smaller, obviously, than the, the Sun, some 367 times smaller. So it may be that we could see the faint disc of Rigel through the clouds, 
whereas the sun is just too close. In fact, there is actually a, a, a mountain named after Rigel on Antarctica. Interestingly, Rigel is actually classified as Beta Orionis, as we know. The reason being is that Alpha Orionis, Betelgeuse, is actually a very variable star, and it may be that when it was named, Rigel, although generally brighter than Betelgeuse, was actually perhaps as bright at that point in time. Anyway, let's move on then and see what else we can do. Now, bear with me a minute because this is going to be a little bit difficult to explain. What we're going to do now is we're actually going to remove Rigel from the equation and imagine it was the centre of our solar system, although it won't be depicted in the next graphic. Now, to get the Sun to the same brightness as the Rigel would be in the centre of our solar system, what we actually have to do is move it to the distance of the Moon. So imagine the planet Earth with the Sun at the Moon. That's literally how bright Rigel would be at that distance and let's see how that plays out. Of course the BAL1A class of luminous supergiant is just a different category of a star to the Sun. The Sun is just a mere T-type yellow dwarf. But look at this, over Mount Everest in Nepal, it just the Earth just wouldn't be able to take it. The Sun at m almost minus 40 magnitudes, it would just become vaporised, much of the Earth would become vapour and water. Just unbelievable how powerful Rigel is, and again, just to remind you, that that's the Sun at the Moon, which is the equivalent to what Rigel would be at the centre of our solar system. I don't think we'd be surviving much longer. Mount Everest itself may, may survive, but certainly all the snow and all the liquids around would just be vaporised instantly. So, this is actually supposed to be a battle between the two. There are a few things that we need to also know about Rigel while we're on the topic. As it's fusing helium, eventually it will be a type 2 supernova, being at around 800 light years from us. It will be a parent magnitude of around minus 11. So again, if you remember the slide of Callisto, that's roughly how bright Rigel would be again from its current distance of 800 light years. The question is, who wins? The Sun with its meagre solar wind and Rigel with its solar wind 10 million times that would have completely battered and destroyed our planet Earth as we can see here also with the previous graphic. This may disappoint some people as they were all probably expecting to think say that Rigel wins. But the thing is, is that Rigel, if it was our sun, would destroy us all. And for that reason itself, I'm actually going to give the title, surprisingly, to our own sun. Because although the class of stars just not even remotely in the same category, not even on the same planet really, or not even in the same solar system, I should say. The sun is what provides us life, and it's what's shined in our skies, in our, the beauty of our planet, and it has produced us. So, the ultimate result of this is that the sun wins, at least until one day we invent new drives, and we can visit Rigel ourselves, and just see if maybe, just maybe, one of the stars in the Rigel system also support life. Thanks for watching. Don't forget, this is an, another episode of our Brightest Star series, so you might like to check out some of the others where we look at stars like Altair and Aldebaran, or Vega, Arcturus and Canopus, Alpha Centauri itself, and many others. So please don't forget to check that out, and I'll see you on the next one.